proof a little bit spicier, that high Y content, they want to be there. The number 12, a little bit older in the bottle and a little bit higher proof. I love the, I love the number 12. That's, that's kind of, when it comes to that craft world of bartending, the number 12 is definitely what you want to talk to them first about. You know, because I think, again, that 90 proof whiskey, and uh, so you're going to be looking at a little bit older in the bottle, about six years for there. And then the rye. Obviously, rye in the mixology world is, is huge right now. Uh, bullet rye, killing it. I think bullet rye, somebody told me the other day, out of all the rye made in the, or all rye being distributed right now, bullet rye is 45% of it. Uh, that they're just a huge part of the rye market, which they are. Um, but rye whiskey, obviously, with the influx that, that rye whiskey has been coming up so, so fast and so quick, whiskey takes a while to become whiskey. So, you know, a lot of the unspoken ones are, are things that people try to say, oh, you don't make your own rye and this and that. Let's, let's disillusion that right now. Almost all rye whiskey in the United States right now, that 10 bottles, comes from LBI. I mean, that's just what it is. Lawrenceburg Distillers. Uh, what's the I stand for? I always forget. Lawrence, Indiana. Lawrenceburg Distillers in Indiana, LEI. Uh, that's where almost all white whiskey comes from. So all these micro distilleries that are coming out now that started a year ago and all of a sudden they have a rye whiskey, it's coming from LDI. And there's no, there's no illusion about that. That's not a bad thing to an extent. You know, I mean, again, it drives a hard grain to produce and they've been doing it for a while. So. You know, High West gets a lot of that stuff from there, Temperance gets some stuff from there, Bullet comes from there, and Dipple comes from there. So, Dickle Rye is not distilled where the regular Dickle is distilled at. It's distilled at LDI, and it's chucked to another uh, area where they will then charcoal filter it to still have that charcoal filtration, and then they bottle it. And again, this is going to be at 90 proof as well. Um, yeah. When it comes to tickle rye, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me about that rye whiskey is it's a great rye whiskey at, at the price point that you want, to be perfectly honest. If I'm going to do a shot of rye whiskey, I think, which is coming in the mixology world, everybody's, you know, bourbon, you know, everybody's using rye whiskey just for cocktails. Like, for me, tickle rye is like, I want to do a shot of rye. Like, that's for me where that bottle can do really well right now in the next two years because again it's price one wise it works out perfectly for that as she wants to obviously I still think it makes a great Sazerac there's still a lot of other good classic cocktails that go with it but I think Dickel Y can really take off in that you know let's just do a shot of rye you know I don't have to do it with a lot of other expensive ryes that are just they're charging a, a lot right now they are charging a lot right now because it, it is so hot it's, it's so hot right now why was he so hot right now? Um, so that's, I mean, that's the right. And, and again, you don't have to, you don't have to be apologetic about it not being from there. Again, it's 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 public knowledge. Just Google it. You know, it's you know, when people because there is that craft side that will try to like, oh, do they make it? Oh, do they do this? And they're they're trying to like flex their knowledge on you because look, that's one thing that's almost that's really hard with mixology accounts. To be perfectly honest, is that. They're like chefs, they have egos, you know, and I'm glad that there's already a push back on that to an extent of, of bartenders with pretentiousness and egos, because it, it's a turn off. I mean, you know, we don't want to see what happened in the mixology world, what happened in the wine craze about five years ago, where there was a wine bar popping up in every city, of, and, you know, wine is, I don't know, I mean, wine's a little pretentious, just in general, it's, that's just generations of it. But this is happening, mixology is happening very fast, so I'm glad that there's already kind of a pushback on that air of pretentiousness that kind of comes along with mixology, because it's fun. You know, it's fun. You know, being in the spirits industry is, it's pretty fun, and we got, I think we all have pretty cool jobs on your side and my side. I mean, I was talking with somebody on the plane today, and telling them about my travel schedule, they're like, what do you do? I'm like, how do I explain this? <laughs> I travel 80% of the year talking booze, and bartending. I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, that didn't exist five years ago. My job did not exist five years ago. I mean, it kind of just goes to show exactly, again, where this mixology world is going and how much it proves to show that Diageo, in general, the biggest global liquor spirits company in the world, still cares about bartenders. And that's, I guess, 
Specifically, I, I guess I didn't give background on myself, but I'll talk about that after I finish all these spirits. Um, let's stick with whiskey. Uh, bullet. Same thing here. I mean, Bullet doesn't have a set distillery that they own and that they're going at, but I mean, again, Google it. It's, I mean, it, it came from Four Roses. There was a contract. It's public record that a lot of it came from Four Roses. Um, little insight that maybe you might want to repeat, might not. But Four Roses now, I mean, two thirds of their products coming out of Four Roses still still goes to the making of Dickle. So we're, Dickle's making Four Roses a lot of money <laughs> and their competitors. But um, but Bullet Bourbon, what obviously, what's the story behind this? One? I'm just going to sit. And, this one, like, if this, the story would be easy, why does it taste, I mean, we said it before, the one-liner, why does it taste the way that it tastes? High rye. High rye content. Spicier. It's going to be a little bit more fortitude, better in cocktails. Again, when you're trying to make a Manhattan, like, I make my Manhattans different with a 90-proof high rye content whiskey than I do if I'm doing an 80-proof, you know, malt, uh, weeded whiskey. Uh, a lot different uh, stories there. But the story, I think, the best way for this is, is the family. I mean, Tom Bullitt and Hollis Bullitt are still 100% behind this. I met Tom Bullitt six years ago. I was managing a hotel bar in New Orleans, and Tom Bullitt sold this account to account to account. I mean, he's not doing it anymore, but this guy literally was on the road, that 80 90% hand selling this whiskey, and the amount of buying they're doing right now is incredible because they literally built it from the ground up, grassroots, on relationships. And it goes to show how I think a brand like this, with just building relationships in the bartender community, really has helped it to explode. Because that's what he went after. He, did, he went straight to bartenders and really talked to them. And obviously it took a while, but now the rate that they're growing at is just incredible uh, when it comes to bartender support. And that's one thing I guess I want to talk about briefly is that even in these craft accounts, you know, look, I'm the first to tell you that in craft accounts and craft bartenders, we're maybe a half of 1% of general consumption in the United States. We're a small percentage. We're not going to be the highest volume account that you're going to have. But you look at the scope of influence that that half of percent has right now in the U.S., I mean, you look, it's in pop culture. I mean, look at Mad Men. Bar Rescue. Love or hate the show, I've only done one episode, but love or hate the show, over 2.3 million people watch that show. And it's a show about bars that didn't exist before. So your bartenders are becoming your gatekeepers. When it comes to specific these mixology accounts, these guys live this stuff. It's what they do day in and day out. So it's not just, again, if you can relate the story of a brand to them, all of a sudden they have a way to, they, have, they now have a personal relationship with the brand, which translates to, when they're serving their guests. I mean, people are making their off-premise decisions when they're at on-premise accounts. <coughs> and bartenders, that are craft bartenders, are relaying that message. I mean, these guys, I mean, I hate to use the trendy word of gatekeepers, but they are gatekeepers. These guys are living it, and they're doing it more than just the 40 hours a week that they're at the bar. So to be able to, again, have that, give them a reason to have a personal connection, is great. Uh, moving on, the rye. Obviously, we already talked about LDI. I mean, 95, it's a 95% rye build for the rye whiskey. Dickel's the same rye build. It's a 95% rye, 5% uh, malted barley to get that fermentation starting. So I guess that's one thing to, um, let's see if there's this other one. Yep, yeah, there it is. There's whistle pig. 100% um, rye whiskey, I mean, just chemically, you got to have, again, like sour mash. That's what sour mash is to start fermentation. And you gotta have some malted barley in there to start this fermentation in this natural process. So being 100% rye, they have to do something there. Um, so just be wary of that. And, and it's what, like 80 bucks a bottle? Something like that? What's supposed to pick here? And my dog hand? It's higher than that. It's higher than what I've been told. It might even be even higher, yeah. I mean, it's just not working. I mean, I don't think it's, it's hard to get because I, I just don't see it moving. Like, when it first came out, it's pretty cool. Oh, man, look at this. It's 100% rye. Like, cool, but it's like 80, 90 bucks. Like, what do you want me to mix with that? 
there's only certain markets where you can do twenty dollar cocktails. And it's, South Carolina is not one of them. Yes, <laughs> South Carolina is not one of them. Yeah, I mean, even New York and San Francisco people are still like, uh, twenty bucks. Jeez. Um, so same, ninety-five percent rye uh, mash. Again, same rye mash bill as the different rye, but obviously different products. Obviously different products. There's a lot of rye whiskey there. It's being aged there. It's still their own blend. It's still their own formulation of what they want to do. So obviously, you know, just because all of the stuff is coming out of the LDI doesn't mean that it's not different from one or the other. You know, even these two products next to each other, they're both 95% rye, they're both 90 proof. We blind taste those whiskeys, they're going to taste different. Because obviously tropical filtering here, and, you know, again, trying to pick barrels in the rack houses and trying to come up with a formulation that we want, how much heat we want, and how much spiciness we want there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the 10